Hi YouTube, uh, welcome back to my garage. Um, yeah, so in this video, well, in the last video, um, if you watched my last video, if you didn't, this won't make any sense. I don't care. Um, in my last video, part four of installing the rear subframe after it all been refurbed, I took the car out after that video for about a seven mile drive just to check nothing fell off, uh, which it didn't. So that was uh, A, a surprise, and B, even more surprising, it felt amazing. Um, the work that I've done on the bottom of the car, front, rear, subframes, all that nonsense um, has really improved the car. So I was very happy and about to go get it MOT'd probably so that I could just enjoy the car for the rest of the year without doing any more major works. Um, but I have decided that Jaguar XGSs are inherently lazy. It's not they're unreliable, they're just lazy. They just like being up on stands in the garage. They don't like being out. Um, so to make sure that I didn't take it out for any more exercise this year, um, my car decided to spring quite a big leak at the front of the radiator. Uh, so after my little seven mile jaunt, uh, checking the rear subframe, I got home to Oh, I just pulled the car in and then there was just water, well, coolant, well, some sort of liquid gushing around here. A quick taste test uh, confirmed that it wasn't screen wash, which I was kind of hoping it would be because that would be a lot simpler. Uh, but it was indeed coolant. Um, the heat coming out would uh, suggest that as well. But I just licked it anyway. <laughs> now, to be fair... You can see the state of the bottom of my radiator. Frankly, I had this out about three or four years ago and did a sort of front engine cleanup. And if I knew what I knew now, I would have just had the radiator recalled. Um, yeah, it's, it's in a pretty bad way. And I think about where that, where's my massive finger? About where that ding is there. I think it probably got hit by a stone or something. I'm gonna have taken all the grill off um, and the under tray all that kind of malarkey is off um, because it was all full of coolant and I didn't want it all drying all manky and horrible and wet so I did take that off dry all that off so it was protected at the front I, I don't really know what's happened there I think to be honest this radiator has just just had it um, it needs a recall so the radiator is gonna have to come out uh, which I've done before so that's not so bad basically involves taking the bonnet off um, and then all this stuff at the front, obviously all the hoses, obviously before we do any of that, we have to drain the coolant, which is so much fun in these cars. Um, you basically have to just pull the bottom hose off and take a shower. So that's great. However, I do have some good news on my part, which is an amazing guy. Um, I need to give him a shout out. Uh, and his name evades me right now. Ian Butterworth. Ian Butterworth. Um, he was on the Facebook groups. So maybe you'll watch this. Thanks, Ian, for being just amazing uh he was moving house and just didn't want some of this jaguar stuff so i've got some other stuff upstairs um but he also amongst that stuff just gave me this jaguar v12 radiator and it is the later one uh with the oil cooler uh not oil cooler power s no let's get this right transmission fluid cooler uh, it's got all the right fitments, of course, for my car. It is the correct radiator for my car. So I drove all the way from Cheshire down to, where did he live? Windsor. Uh, so that was quite a trek. Um, had a lovely look round his collection of cars. Uh, he's a character, walked out smoking a big cigar. You know what I mean? Cool guy. Um, but yeah, massively thankful, uh, especially now that he just gave me this. Now, I'll be honest, my plan... This is my plan. I actually have a plan. I'm going to clean this one up because I've looked at this and actually it doesn't look too bad. Um, might do a bit of a homemade compression test on it, kind of block some bits off and pump some water in just to check there's nothing stupid. I'm thinking then what I can do is take the other one out, go take that to the radiator guy um, that I found and drop this one in. So basically... Even though I'm going to be doing the job twice, because I will want my nice record radiator, 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 uh, in. Because if you've watched my channel and you've seen this car, obviously everything's ridiculously clean and nice. And I'm just starting to do that sort of thing down in here. I mean, I did do this a couple of years ago, which was, wow, this is lovely. But yeah, I'm not going to be happy having a manky 
rusty radiator in but if it works it means i can drop it in um you know tomorrow or whenever i've finished taking the radiator out and then i will have a working car at least for um you know the duration that my radiator is off getting recalled and if the guy does an amazing job of recalling that radiator then when i've dropped the new recalled radiator in uh, i can take this one and get it recalled and then i've either got a spare or i could sell it so yeah that's the plan so first job is i'm going to clean this up and just see how this one's looking so my rough plan for cleaning this off i'll do what i did to the other one uh five years ago when i had it off just put it in this sort of container shame it's not just a little bit bigger but ikea obviously didn't plan for storing radiators under beds when they designed these under bed trays um yeah i'm gonna get some nice hot detergenty water um just let everything soak basically i'll just have to keep swapping sides and stuff get everything soaked get all the grease kind of broken up and then it's a case of back washing it out that way so this is the rear of the radiator um and i say like i said the, the fins on this side look look pretty good uh, on the other side they're a little bit compressed down the bottom uh, where you'd expect but i'm hoping most of that is a bit like here is just grease and gunk so if i fire some water gently uh, you, you don't really want to use a pressure washer for this these fins are very fragile um and you just end up bending them and then you've, you've knackered your radiator so i'm going to take my time backwash that out maybe do that a few times and then yeah i'm going to seal up these uh holes and uh pump a load of water into one of them and just when it's all dry on the outside just see if there's anything stupid um and if not i think we're good to go to at least use this radiator temporarily for a bit right well that's looking pretty good uh get in there with some brake cleaner later on as well and just see if i get even more out but when i had it up to the light i could see a bit of light through the fins which for what i need that radiator for i'm happy with that um i also did block off uh the outlets and pumped a bit of water in as best i could holding my hands and things um and i didn't see it spraying out of anywhere so it's fixed <laughs> we'll find out when i put it on the car um next job is to take off this mahoosive bonnet uh so first off i need to take off this front grill <clears throat> which has a screw here a screw here one here and one and one on the other side screwdriver time right with all those removed that just lifts out stick that down there for now and then i'm going to want to undo these two on this side and these two on this side in a minute i've got some other stuff to do first one thing i need to do first is put these screws away that i've just taken off that's not standard by the way my um mid fitting has started to split I do actually have a replacement grill that i will fix up at some point i do this one hand maybe not come on there we go right we need to remove these <coughs> excuse me whatever they're called support arms can't remember so i've done this before um on my own is a lot easier with a mate so what i do is i lay a duvet over the engine obviously the engine's cold i then take these out lay the bonnet down unsupported then only held on at the front on the duvet i can then undo those bolts at the front and then i've basically just got a completely loose bonnet to lift off the engine uh when i say just lift off the engine it's uh it's no mean feat. It's a big, heavy bit of metal, but I did it before on my own. Otherwise, I might go over and ask Dave next door over there to give me a hand. Right, so there's my duvet. Uh, I've also just tied up the bonnet loosely onto the garage door. Um, doesn't need much. It's just while I do one side and then the other of these supports. So these simply, you need a quite a small screwdriver to get in and out of the way of that air conditioning hose get in behind there sorry pull that little clip out and then that will just pull out i'm not going to do it one-handed because i do want to support the uh, bonnet but they literally click in pull that retaining clip out and then that'll just pop off the socket same on the front all right so that's that one off 
like I said, it's now held up pretty much all its weight on the garage door. Just until I get this side off. All right, and there's the end result. No supports in now, just the, literally just the bonnet resting on a duvet. Um, so the reason I do that is I can now undo those four bolts at the front um, and then either on my own lift this off, but you see I can get my hand under. If you don't put anything here, your bonnet's just gonna close and you, you're gonna be in all sorts of mess trying to lift it off. Whereas that's, uh, apart from the weight, that's um, really easy to lift off now. So now it's just a case of these four bolts here and then that's ready to lift. Washer seems to be stuck to the paint. That's fine, it can stay there. It'll fall off later. Yeah, so it's four of those. They are specifically ended, which is probably why I've kept the originals and not replaced them. Don't like replacing stuff with weird threads. It's not served me well in the past. So this one we should be able to get on just with a standard half inch socket and then do the same on the other side. Right, so that's completely loose now. That bonnet is not attached to the car in any way. It's just a case of lifting it off. First thing you're going to want to do is undo your bottom hose from the radiator. I'm not sure what size that is on mine. Obviously it depends on what size uh, Jubilee clip you've put on there at some point. Um, and then you want whoa, come here, a big container ready to catch all the coolant. Now I want to save this coolant so I've just cleaned that out completely. Um, Obviously, if you're doing a coolant flush and chucking the coolant away responsibly, um, <clears throat> then it doesn't really matter. You can try and feed it into some sort of container uh, smaller than this, but um, it, it won't work. <laughs> it just won't. Once you undo that bottom hose, coolant gushes out all over the place and you get soaked. Jaguar... On the early cars, I think the early radiators actually had a little drain tap at the bottom and... At some point, Jaguar must have had an argument with a load of mechanics and got annoyed with them and thought they'd get back at them by removing that feature. So, yeah, I think I don't know what year the drain tap on the bottom of the radiator. I think it used to come out here, maybe. That, that would look sensible. Anyway, there isn't one on the later cars. You just got to pull the bottom hose. You tell I'm waffling because I can't be bothered to do it, but I'm going to have to get on with it. Anyway, let's let's waste a bit more time thinking about which one it is. I reckon it's, I reckon it's six or seven, if not eight. Let's go seven. I was right, it is seven. So yeah, I'll just loosen off this bottom hose. It might start to dribble already. And then I need to go up top <clears throat> and, is that turning? Yeah. I need to go up top, open the caps off. I'll just remove them and then pull the bottom hose. It's as simple as that. There is no, there's no fancy science to it. Is that completely, that's not gonna be loose enough. So why my ratchet stop making that satisfying ratchet noise? 
Right, that should do it. Yeah, so I want that Jubilee clip out of the way because I want to get a good grip on there once I've got ready, everything ready and pull it off. I'm just trying to zoom in so you can see the bottom hose goes on over that lower radiator outlet. Um, yeah, so we'll go up top. Pull off our caps. He says, these are new, newish caps and they can be a little bit stubborn. Oh, there we go, there's dribble coolant everywhere. <laughs> Come on, you vicious thing. There we go. So the other job I'm not looking forward to is bleeding this system again afterwards. That's a joy. Right. And now for the fun bit. <laughs> get out of the way, get out of the way. Oops. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to pull that bottom hose off and at least the first bit of coolant before I manage to persuade it to go in this big uh, container. It's just going to shoot all forward, all up here, down here, sit in here, soak my brake, cooling ducts and all sorts of things. It really is a pain in the ass, but it is what it is. Anyway, let's try and get that container as far over as we can. And here it goes. Oh. Here she comes. calm before the storm I'll tell you what once this goes there we go she's coming try and get it just on the edge and then <laughs> no it's <not> that now <laughs> Right, that was uh, predictable. I thought I actually had it there, and then, as always, the last minute, it just whoop, slips out your hand. Uh, yeah, it makes a huge mess. I've done that about four or five times now, flushing this radiator and changing the radiator over last time, and it's always the same. So yeah, I'll uh, just let that drain out now. Right, bottom hose out of the way. Uh, just tucked here under the anti roll uh, over the anti roll bar out of the way uh, gives me access. Uh, the next hose I want to take off is is this one that feeds the um, cabin air, uh, hot air in the cabin thing. There's a word for it, heater matrix. That's the one uh, that feeds that. I just keep getting dribbled in my face. Let's do not want coolant in my eye. Um, yeah, to get on this jubilee clip here is pretty much impossible so I'm going to take that one off there pull that pipe off and then take that pipe out with the radiator hopefully right, that's that off and out of the way so yeah it's pretty flexible so hopefully a bit I'll just take that with us and remember to put it on before I put the radiator back in obviously every hose you pull off at the minute releases coolant so have have a carpet ready yeah carpet does the job soaks it up nicely all right, next we'll tackle this top hose. Man, I am soaked. I need to go get changed. Ugh, do that in a minute though. Yeah, let's pop your air intake out of the way. Um, probably gonna take off. Well, this has got to come off anyway, so I'll disconnect that, get that out of the way, and then uh, tackle that Jubilee clip down there, which actually has a handy little access hole for your socket there. Now that lower hose is uh, being stubborn, so I'll leave that there for now. We'll get uh, 
get this top um, cross member off and then I'll be able to get two hands on there a bit easier and pop that off maybe put a bit of um, WD-40 or something just in the just to crack the seal on it uh, so yeah I've got to disconnect this here at the back of here which is just a spring clip um, I need to unclip these I don't need to remove those things why is everything impossible one-handed those that lifts off there Put that over there and this can slide out they can get chucked over there out of the way uh, and this side we've got a hose here which is the um, air breather not air breather <coughs> coolant bleed breather whatever system um, inlet so I need to take that off Right, so I've just disconnected the um, coolant bleed inlet off there. That can just sit there. Um, and on the other side, we disconnected that before. Um, and then there's this one that goes to... Ah, something in there. I'm never entirely sure where all these pipes go. But anyway, disconnected those two. So now this... Um, radiator bleed pipe that runs along the top of the cross member <coughs> we just need to disconnect from the radiator and that should lift off out of the way let's take a five eighths five eighths socket just crack that off and then just make a note of how this goes on Got your bolt, uh, yeah, copper washer at the top, copper washer underneath. He says, hmm, No, I thought there was okay, just a copper washer at the top. I'll check that's right <laughs> anyway. That now will feed out of these holes again. He says, I need to put a bit of lube on there and get that All right. I've just uh, loosened all this air conditioning dryer off. Hopefully, I can just move that all out of the way because I don't really want to have to take all this off again like I did last time. I'm now just disconnecting the fan housing. There's three connections, one in the middle and one at each side. They're a 10 mil fitting. I'll just get them off. I'll just turn the extension off for that. Right, um, I think that's it. So in theory, I should be able to just sort of press this out of the top of the radiator and lift it all off. I'll find out in a sec. Right, yeah, that was completely off. <coughs> it wasn't as simple as just lifting it off. Ideally, I'd, well, last time I took all this off anyway because I was refurbing it all. That's a new dryer and I've got new brackets here and I've painted everything. But I really didn't want to take that all off again, so I was kind of hoping I could work around it. I still think I'm probably going to have to take these these brackets off because uh, they're going to get in the way of the radiator anyway. Uh, one thing I did note is when I took that off, I didn't realise that was... I knew there was another copper washer somewhere and it's uh, it's there. I think it's pretty much perished now anyway. But uh, that should be with that bolt. This one here they come together so I'll stick that with that put all that in a bag in a minute and yeah have a look at what I need to do next I know these can come off now yeah, it's rusted pretty bad they're brand new those it's only been on a couple of years right now I've got that cross member off I could uh, get both hands on that slightly stubborn hose and pop that off uh, I'm going to do the same on this side Say one thing for XGS is tools quite often seem to go through and out the bottom instead of getting hidden on something, so that's good. 
That's a plus point. Oh, don't be a dick. Come on. Come on. Get off. Right. I can just be... Yeah, I can just sit there. That's fine. I'll maybe tie it up out of the way. What I don't want is when I lift the radiator for things to be getting caught on it. In fact, I'll just take that Jubilee, Jubilee, Jubilee clip out, add it to this little collection. Got a bit of filing to do in a minute. Right, uh, now it's these two um, transmission oil fluid, whatever you want to call them, connections. So they're just uh, off. I've done the top one, I've just got this lower one to do. Don't worry about that dribble of fluid, that's from undoing the top one. It's not a leak. I know that's rare on an XGS, but it's not. I don't think I can do this in film, but yeah, I'm going to take that off. Ah, uh, that's that one off, and we're just draining into a jug. I changed my transmission fluid not that long ago, so it should be all right. But uh, obviously after this, it'll need topping up. Look a bit, a bit darker than I was expecting, to be honest. But anyway, uh, right. I've been reminding myself of this situation from last time. Obviously, last time I had all the air conditioning stuff off anyway, and I seem to remember now. I'm thinking about it that you can't lift the radiator out without taking all the fan cowling off and you can't take the fan cowling off without taking the fan off and it's all one big load of nonsense so i'm just gonna disconnect my air conditioning dryer uh, and condenser radiator take that out and then because i haven't got air conditioning anyway so it's not like i'm losing any gas or anything like that it's only a couple of connections here here uh somewhere else i don't know um, and then I should be able to lift that radiator out and I'll see if I can pull the radiator forward enough to lift out without worrying about this fan cowling nonsense. Right, yeah, I've disconnected it there. Make sure you don't lose your O-ring. I've disconnected it here. And now this whole unit will just lift out. So we can put that out of the way. Hello, B. And... Maybe that just gives me enough room to pull this forward and off. I'll find out in a sec. Right, ah, that was a success, sort of. Bit of a fight here getting past the uh, that sort of uh, extension, if you like, of the fan cowling that holds the electric fan. But I could sort of move that out of the way, get that pipe that I hadn't disconnected up here. And then I was also fouling on this uh, because the radiator sort of sits in between them, but I just had just enough room to wiggle it out. No problems at all on this side. So I've cleaned everything up down here as best I can. Um, I'm going to be in here again in winter because obviously I'm going to get this old radiator that I've just taken out record. Yeah, looking at it now, it's out of the car. It's pretty much destroyed. It's well in need of a new core. Uh, the leak is here, I think where that bend is, or maybe in this slot. It's just a pinhole in one of the tubes spurting out, but frankly, you know, it's had it. It's definitely in need of a, a refurb. So I've swapped the, uh, that hose over to this replacement radiator, and now I'm gonna try and slot that one in. Right, there's the temporary excuse me, <coughs> replacement radiator in. Oh, it's sliding perfectly well, actually, yeah. As long as you get in between that spike there and, and the round bit there, that's all good. So it does feel weird for me to be putting something back in my car that's not spotless and shiny. But needs must right now. Um, we'll get this radiator in, albeit it needs refurbing at some point um, in winter. 
but it means at least I can run the car for the rest of the summer season or autumn as we're nearly into now. Okay, so it's um, many days later. And of course, as soon as I started filming, an aeroplane goes over. Should not have bought a house next to Manchester Airport. Um, yeah, I've put everything back together. I didn't film that because frankly, it's just the uh, reverse of everything that I did. Well, for me, a few days later, for you about 30 seconds ago. 